All right, so previously we talked about the Baron and Kenny approach. Uh, there were two approaches, as you can remember. One was the subtraction approach or approach one, and another was the multiplication approach or the approach two. Um, and when we have done the labs, we, uh, especially in the uh, first part of the lab, we have seen uh, that when our outcome was continuous, um, then the subtraction approach as well as the multiplication approach, that means approach one and two, um, they both gave you the same result, right? Uh, but when we are dealing with a non-collapsible measure such as odds ratio or hazard ratio, then um, we have seen uh, in our lab scenario that when our outcome was binary then the approach one and approach two gave very different result for the indirect effect right so that gives us a hint that um, when we are working with the subtraction approach at least then the change in estimate um, approach does not really work that means that um, this uh, subtraction approach is not going to be useful anymore when we are working with the um, non-collapsible measures such as hazard ratio or odds ratio and product coefficient method still gave us the uh, expected result uh, that means the approach two still gave us the uh, expected result but product coefficient methods can be hard to interpret um, and that means that we are only stuck with the continuous outcome type of model so if we are using um, a linear model to deal with binary outcomes then it is not really clear what we are really trying to estimate here and even in a scenario where we have continuous outcomes, um, when confounding ad, uh, exists, then it, the situation can be quite complicated. Then the simplistic methods such as Baron and Kenny approach might not work anymore. So what about confounding? Like if you have a confounder variable in the Baron Kenny approach example that we have seen in our lab, um, can it accommodate the confounding? It is not really clear. And to deal with this confounding type of scenarios, we need to work with modern methods instead of this um, Baron Kenny approach um, to get a good understanding and uh, understanding about the mediation. All right, so what is this modern approach we are talking about? Um, basically, we are talking about the counterfactual definition. And in this counterfactual definition, if you remember from our previous lab, we are basically talking about um, comparison of the exposure group versus the control group. That was the situation under which we were estimating that total effect, right? But when we are under this mediation, then we have basically another form of exposure so in in this scenario um, there are at least two variables that are impacting our outcome right and this mediator variable it can also take the value of one and it can take the value of zero so if this was the scenario that our exposure was one and our mediator was one and our um, exposure was zero and our mediator was zero then we can definitely uh, by comparing these two groups outcome we can definitely get the total effect so for the definition of the direct effect and indirect effect let us define another counterfactual where our exposure is one but our mediator is zero right and how how can that help with our definition here so the way it works is that in in this scenario we are just going to fix our m value say for example in our in this particular example i'm fixing to m equal to zero so no mediator and m equal to zero no mediator for these two 
and the only thing that is changing is the exposure category so the direct effect would be simply the comparison between these two groups outcome when we have fixed the mediator category it could be zero in this particular example or as we will see later uh, m could be fixed to one as well and then we could simply compare the change in the exposure category and that will would give us the direct effect as well so this is the direct effect we are fixing the m value and changing the a value so this is giving us the direct effect how do we get the indirect effect so for the indirect effect we are basically fixing our a value right so the in indirect effect is basically the effect of the mediator the effect that is going through the mediator and in this case we are basically uh, fixing the a value and we are allowing the m value to change from 1 to 0 in this case we are defining this as the indirect effect that is not going to directly from a to your y or outcome it is going through the m all right so this is the definition of our indirect effect in this case so in this particular scenario we we are defining the potential outcome um, as this that if we say y parenthesis a equal to one that means the cardiovascular event if y is our cardiovascular when osteoarthritis status equal to one so this is y parenthesis a equal to one and y parenthesis a equal to zero would be the cardiovascular status when a osteoarthritis status is zero so the total effect as we have seen in a couple of slides ago is basically the difference between the outcome under two different exposure groups so um, for the uh, continuous outcomes we basically compare the means and for the binary outcome we basically compare the probabilities uh, to get this treatment effect for mediation effect we basically expand the scenario so since we have two um, variables that are predictive of outcome we have um, at least four of these combinations right so the first combination is when the exposure uh, the person is in the exposure group but there was no mediation that means that he was probably a osteoarthritis patient but did not take any pain medication the second group is that person do not belong to osteoarthritis group and do not take pain medication the third group is that person belongs to osteoarthritis group and takes the pain medication and the fourth group can be the person does not belong to osteoarthritis group but still takes the pain medication that means what these are the outcomes or whether that person had um, cardiovascular event or not given that they belong to these groups right so in that case we can measure direct effect in two different ways in the first way we simply fix our m equal to zero in both of these comparisons only we allow a to vary a from zero to one or we could fix our mediator equals to one in both of these and then we allow a to vary from zero to one so basically what we are doing here whatever value we are fixing for m it does not matter only thing matters is that we fix our m and then we allow our a value to vary so whatever outcome we get for an a patient um, who is in the exposure group versus not in the exposure group when both of their mediator status was the same both of them were taking the pain medication or we take the exposure group versus the unexposure group when they they do not take the pain medication in both of these cases we get direct effect 
on the other hand to get the indirect effect what we are doing we are just going to fix our treatment or the exposure variable so in this example what we are doing is we are basically fixing our um, osteoarthritis status to be one that means that person belongs to the osteoarthritis group and we are fixing our m sorry we are allowing our m value to vary so this person takes the pain medication this person does not take the pain medication or what we could do we could fix to the control group and we could compare the person who taking the pain medication versus not taking the pain medication again the idea is the same we are fixing our a and this comparison the comparison that we are making here is giving us the indirect effect and this is how we are defining the counterfactual definition of the in here we are defining the direct effect and in here we are defining the indirect effect by fixing some particular value say for example for the direct effect we are fixing the m value for indirect effect we are fixing our a value all right so one of the last thing that i i just want to mention quickly is that even in a randomized clinical trial where we are randomizing the treatment right we're randomizing the person who belongs in the exposure group or who does not belong in the exposure group we are randomizing that so that is randomized this a is randomized but then whether the person takes the pain medication or not or whatever mediator we are considering that m variable is not randomized right it could happen that all the people who are in the treated group they take the uh, pain medication and all the people who do not take the who, who are not also in the exposure group they may still take the pain medication right so there is no randomization going on around m that means in the mediation analysis what we are essentially dealing with we are essentially dealing with two exposure groups one is the whether they belong in the osteoarthritis uh, group or not or the control group or whether they take pain medication or not so you can kind of view this as a situation where we have two exposure group and in this two exposure group at least for m it, it is not randomized even in a randomized clinical trial so you, as you can understand it is absolutely necessary for us to address this confounding even in a randomized clinical trial now thinking about a observational study where you have this confounding or confounder think about we absolutely need to adjust for confounder a for a we also need to address for uh, address for the confounders when we are building our model for m so whether we are building our main model or whether we are building our mediation model we should adjust for confounders and even in a randomized clinical trial that, that was not very different than observational data cases so this is something that you need to keep in mind um, that the mediation analysis is somewhat different than when, when you are trying to just estimate the total effect out of a regression